You can donate your body to science for after you die. What does that mean? Well, one option is donating it to a body farm. What's a body farm, you ask? It's where they study human decomposition. We're going to bury bodies under the ground. What we're looking for is what happened, when did it happen, what kind of evidence. It's something that the research community will certainly benefit from, forensic scientists will benefit from. I think the research is very groundbreaking. I've given my life to science, I plan on giving my body to science. And it was always my dream to create this facility and we could help more people and the families of our victims. We're the eighth body farm in the United States. We're very proud of that. These little scientists with wings on them, they're going to be able to take us to the body. They're going to be able to tell us where someone has been dumped. I'm Mary Ellen O'Toole, and I'm the director of the Forensic Science Program here at George Mason University. Working a serial murder case obviously is one of the greatest challenges because oftentimes the victims are found outside and now we have this body farm where we're studying the very thing that I worked on in the FBI, outdoor homicide scenes. If a human body is dumped outside, they begin to decompose and honeybees, they fly around and they land on flowers and, and other things and then they take that back to their hives. If, let's say, the police department or the FBI is looking for a body in a large field, it oftentimes can be a very Herculean effort. We know that there are beekeepers all over the United States. We can go around that area and we can contact those people that own the bees to see if they would allow us to test their honey. And if it tests positive, then we can estimate that the body is likely within two to five miles. We're talking about narrowing down, it could be 100 miles, it could be 50 miles, but from an investigative perspective, that's a big area to cover to be able to determine, is somebody out here? There'll be a homicide and they'll move the body. So now we want to know, was there a body here or not? So it, we have to look at the chemistry that's still remaining, either in the soil or in the air around that area. I'm Brian Eckenrode and I'm a research associate professor here at George Mason University working in the forensics program. Okay. How important is this body farm to science? It's one of eight in the country and we have a given soil type uh, here in the mid-Atlantic. So what we'd want to do is integrate the data from a variety of body farms or field forensic laboratories throughout the country. It's like a puzzle in a lot of ways. We're looking for that common set of chemicals that you would say that is human, independent of temperature, humidity, soil type, and a variety of other factors. And that hasn't been proven yet? That has not been de determined yet. We do not know. We kind of got some ideas, but the common ones throughout a variety of soil types has not been determined yet. I would find human remains, and it was very difficult to pinpoint the time since death. I'm Emily Rancor, and I'm the Associate Director of the Forensic Science Program here at George Mason University. So the body farm here is my dream. I am a former crime scene specialist with the Prince William County Police Department. Uh, for the police, I used to investigate homicides, suicides, suspicious deaths. I always would want to bring some um, answers to the family of the cases that we were working on and sometimes we couldn't do that because there isn't the data here in Northern Virginia for the decomposition process of what happens to humans when they're out in the environment in the snow in the sun of Northern Virginia. By having a body farm here you are providing a solution to crime scene investigators? Yes. We are helping crime scene investigators have this very important data. So we will have bodies that will be put out here in the summer months, in the winter months, in the fall. We will also have different scenarios that we create with the bodies. We might take a body and wrap it up in carpet 
and leave it on the ground of the facility. We want to see a body that is rolled up in carpet. How long does that take to decompose? Does it take longer? Does it take shorter? Because it's not going to be having the direct elements hitting it. We're going to bury bodies under the ground. What we're looking at here is a ground penetrating radar device, also known as GPR. The device is very simple in the fact that the lower portion of this emits a radar or a sound signal into the ground. It's basically penetrating down and anything that it sees into the ground that it hits, the signal will come back up. It's just like sonar. So if there's an object such as a body, a gun, uh, could even be a rock. <laughs> in the ground, you would see a signal on here. I'm Steve Burmeister. I'm a professor here at the Forensic Science Program. We're standing in probably the most complex environment that you're gonna use this device. A very skilled operator has to interpret the data to understand what is a root versus something else. What we'd like to do here at the body farm is to put a donor into the ground and study it over the course of time. The technology now allows uh, scientists to know things uh, that they didn't know before, and I think that's where the secret here. We're using technology to leverage it. And there's no rhyme or reason to this. It's just as we find them, we are marking off our evidence here. So George Mason is the very first certified forensic Faro University laboratory where we now are able to offer a course, which is a 3D scanning course, and we teach documentation of crime scenes. What would take a crime scene investigator hours upon hours to get their photographs, get their measurements, this can do in just a few minutes. And we can create our 3D walkthrough, our fly-throughs, we could do bloodstain pattern analysis, we could do trajectory analysis, we can walk a judge, a jury, or any of the prosecutors or defense attorneys through our scenes. And we are able to show that to other people as if they were there. So when you donate your body to science, it means that they can do the research to prove the science that solves the cases and trains the next generation. What these people have done when they contribute their body to science will live forever. This is the kind of research that will improve these kinds of cases, I think, all over Virginia and ultimately, hopefully, all over the country. Are there any limitations to what you can do out here at the body farm? Now that we have this facility, the sky is the limit. We are able to do anything that we would like to research. Where the limitation comes in is the funding. I think we don't have any problem getting support from communities. They would say, well, why haven't you done it yet? But it's uh, other entities that we have to still work through and convince that it's important. An individual prior to their death can decide that they want to donate their remains to the body farm once they die. It's an incredibly personal and awesome decision when somebody thinks that upon their death, they want to contribute their body to science. I mean, it's the ultimate gift. It's the ultimate unselfish act. The most prominent aspect of all of this is to be able to do a much better job of identifying and locating human remains in order to make sure that the person responsible for the homicide is identified, apprehended, and prosecuted. You know, we always say there's never closure for these families, but it gives them answers. And that's what we're looking to do out here at the Body Farm. We want to bring answers for these families. We want to give a voice to our victims who can no longer speak for themselves anymore. And we want to bring all of this together and collect the data so that we can help the future generations that are working as crime scene investigators. We'd like to hear what you think about the topic. Leave us a comment below and be sure to subscribe to our Solutionaries channel. We're just getting started.